Hi everyone, my name is Jason and we are going to go over the chmod command. Now the chmod command changes file permissions. So we're going to start off with an example and then I'm going to get into detail. If you notice on the window above I have six files. They look like text files. They're actually executable files but they do not show an executable icon because I do not have permission to run them. So what we're going to do is change the permission to pair right here. So what I'm going to do is change directory, and this is in my terminal, change directory to desktop secret. Now this is the folder that I have everything in. Now if I type in ls minus l, this is going to list everything that's in this folder, what you see above, and it's going to list the permissions as well. So here are all of my permissions. These are all the files with their permissions. And they all associate themselves with the files you see above. So let's look at pair. Pair right here has an R, two dashes, an R, two dashes, an R, and another two dashes. What does that mean? Well, what we have here, and the reason we have three R's, is because we have the first set of rules are for the administrator r dash dash. The second r in two dashes is for the group and the last set is for everyone else. Now as you can imagine the r is for read, the w is for write, and an x is for execute. Obviously we are only seeing the r at this point. So let's go ahead and make sure we know who these people are. First of all the administrator is most likely you. Group is a group of people who can share some administrative privileges if you'd like them to and user and everyone else is literally everybody else so what we want to do is change pair to be executable and writable so what we're going to go ahead and do is issue our command chmod and then we're going to put a number in here we're going to put in the number seven and some fours and the name of the file pair. Now when I press enter nothing happens so let's go ahead and look again into what we have. Now you'll notice there's a difference and if you noticed as well if you're paying attention the icon changed on the pair up here it is now an executable file and let's look down here we have rwx now instead of r dash dash like all of the other ones so that worked so let's go ahead and focus up here. We have our chmod 744 pair. So obviously you know pair means the file name, chmod means change the permissions. What does the 744 mean? Well the 744 associates with different type of permissions. So the 7 is for read, write, and execute, 6 for read and write, and so on. You can Google Chmod file permission numbers and get the whole list of what they do so you can fix them. And keep in mind the first number only affects the administrator, the second number affects the group, and the last number affects everyone else. So 4 is what they already had. So if you look at 4, 4 is read only which is what it's displaying down there. And that's pretty much how you use it. Now there is a cool little trick you can do you can, I want to go ahead and change this back, chmod 444 pair. Enter, and you'll notice the file went back up here to looking like a text file. And if we list it all again, you can already imagine it's going to be just readable. So here's the cool trick you can do. You can do a chmod 777. Now the number doesn't matter. You can do any kind of number combination you want. The trick is a star. So I want you to watch the window on top when I press enter right now. You'll notice all of them changed to executable and writable. And just to confirm that, we have everything right there. Now you might be wondering how you can check hidden files, because occasionally there will be hidden files that you might want to change file permissions to, because typically hidden files are the ones that might have some pretty strict file permissions that you need to change. So what you can do is do an ls again, minus l, 
which is what we had before listed, but if you do A, it's a listing all of them. Now obviously here, I'm not going to really show that much. All I'm showing here is the DS underscore store, which if I change my hidden files to show and open this back up, you'll see now there is that hidden file that is being shown. Pretty cool stuff. And you can see I'm only allowed to read and write it. I'm not allowed to execute it. I don't really care. I'm not going to be using that. But that's all you have to do. Make sure you change into the directory that you need to be in, first of all, and then go ahead and use Chmod for whatever you need.